Yes, it's like, this is my time. You little babies don't get to roll over anything. So. And it is kind of funny, I think, with friends like the alpha and the pecking order, there's different levels. So, like with my guys, so the alpha horse that I have, he is quietly assertive. So he yeah. rules the roost, but he doesn't necessarily, like, aggressively bite and, like, forcefully return and kick or anything oh, like yeah. that. But he's well-respected by everybody. I mean, like, he can just walk over and they just move away from him. Like, exactly. And he doesn't have to do it. Now, my middle one is the biter and the kicker to my to Remy. Yes. And so he is much more aggressive as far as, like, his actions and his strikes and with Remy. And then... He has to take it out on somebody. Right, like, he's upset. But it's so Mm -hmm. funny because um, as far as, like, just the dynamics, as far as their actions and how they express their dominance is different. Yes, I love that you brought that up. Brenda is actually going to talk about um, leadership styles, Mm -hmm. is that what you call it, Um, within people. But it's totally within horses, too, right? And it depends on your horse's personality mm-hmm. as to how dominant they are. Like, I had one mare that, that broke another horse's jaw. She was so dominant. She would just be, I called her Donkey Kong. She would just <laughs> berserk if she was in with another, other new horses. And then, you know, like, Salty, this Palomino, he's, very, he's always been bought of the pecking order. He's very neurotic and extroverted and kind of skittish and so he's he's usual unless he's in pain he's super not nice leader you know he just like pins his ears mildly half back and everybody just scatters you know yeah he doesn't have to do a lot but yeah there's a very different personalities and different leadership styles within the herd too. so the components are the horsemanship components um, horses, as we already said, are constantly testing who's alpha within the herd. And herd dynamics are very important to your horse, so they're constantly reassessing that. And horses live in the moment. So, you know, like we talked about in the beginning, um, why does our horse spook at something they were fine at yesterday? It's because they live in the moment. And it just happened to be scary in that moment. So it's up to us to show up as the leader and say, hey, that really isn't scary. Like, that's not something we get to be worried about. You know, if they really spook, I might uh, have a little consequence. You know, I have a way that I say no to my horse. I bend them around and I'm like, nope, this is going to be a whole lot more work. Let's try this again. And I'm just, I show up as a leader and then I have to be consistent about that consequence. If he comes around and spooks at it again, we're going to move his feet and get him in trouble a little bit and then set him back on their way. And, and um, I'm probably skipping ahead. <laughs> As I have the whole thing because I can't read the, what I wrote. <laughs> uh, but another example of this is like if you let your horse crowd you and get away with it, you know, and not being consistent with that, you know, what you allow, your horse is gonna think is right. So make sure what you're allowing is something you want your horse to be doing. Um, and, you know, I've seen this build, like, I had a client that came out, it was kind of tough to saddle, and this horse didn't really stand still, and a little bit hard to bridle, the ride was okay. And then we go to load the, he goes to load the horse in the trailer, and like, you know, the horse has been pushing through him as he's leading the horse to the trailer and all this, and he didn't, he didn't fix it. So then he goes to load the horse in the trailer, the horse is like, well, you're not my leader. That looks scary, and I don't believe you that that is not scary. And so, you know, part of being a leader is showing up and being believable and like proving to your horse, no, it's actually fine, you know, because they have to to believe us. And part of doing that is sometimes getting a little firm and being assertive and working through some emotional issues with your horse and some confidence building. And that's how we can build our rapport and our rep as as a leader. 
you know, and what I like to really stress to people is the little things matter, you know, you know, catching your horse, leading your horse, and standing still for saddling, standing still for mounting, me not fighting them, putting the bridle on, and then putting their head up, all those things add up. And if you let them slide, it's going to end up being a bad ride, or you can't get them in the trailer. So think of how you can address those little things, and if you take the time to do that now, it's going to be so much easier later on. And, you know, really working on that quality and instilling good habits in yourself. So um, one thing I have people do is if you do it wrong, you get to do it again. Just like your horse. You know, because whatever you do once, you're going to do a million times, right? So if I, if I get off my horse incorrectly and I do it in an unsafe way, I need to get back on and do it the right way. Because I'm building muscle memory in my body and I'm building habits. So, you know, being very vigilant over the, the habits that I'm developing in myself is really important. And then, the habits I'm developing in my horse. You know, and it, a lot of times we have to help our horse refocus. If they get whinny and they're herd bound and they're worried about the herd, we they need us to show up as a leader and say, you know, I'm here. You don't need to worry about them. It's just us. And when you build that kind of partnership, you can work up to being in really chaotic environments. And if your horse is worried about that, <laughs> um, then <laughs> we just don't notice anything. Anyways, if your horse is worried about that environment, being able to say, hey, we don't need to worry about this. That other horse is bucking. This horse is rearing over here. We are fine. And being able to, your horse then to trust you enough and believe you that, oh yeah, we are fine. Like, I may not feel too great about it, I might be a little tense, but my leader says I'm fine, so I'm going to be fine. And that's when you know you've gotten to that emotional fitness breaking point where your horse really trusts you and you're getting that partnership developed, you know. So how do we convince our horse that we are worth following? Hopefully not with carrots. <laughs> Some people have tried that. Actually, it doesn't work. Um, so I just want to briefly go over like the responsibilities we have and our horse's responsibilities. Because as humans, we try to micromanage everything, and that doesn't help our horse. We're taking the horse's responsibility away. So um, my responsibility as the leader, as the human, is life up, life down. You know, I'm controlling my energy, my intentions, whatever you want to call it, and my horse should match my energy. Like, if I'm picking up the life from my body and I'm squeezing my legs, my horse should track, or can it, whatever I'm asking for. They should match me, just like a uh, foal would match his mother. You know, I have to be attentive to danger, you know, I'm not going to put my horse in a bad situation where, you know, they're too close to another horse and they could kick them. Um, and it's my job to worry about herd dynamics. So if you've ever seen a rider on a horse and their horse pins their ears at the horse that walks by, that's an example of the horse taking over the human's leadership. So it's my responsibility to protect the herd. So either I need to communicate with that other rider and say, hey, that was too close, man like ride around my horse a little further, or if I feel like my horse was a little too sensitive about it, I can be like, hey, we're fine, you knock it off. Because if you have a really dominant uh, horse, they're going to be like, <laughs> to everybody in the, in the whole thing. And if you don't correct it, then pretty soon they're running all the other riders around the arena and, and you're just sitting on them. Um, and then your horse's responsibilities are to match the leader, maintain the gate um so if i put my horse in a gate and i expect them to long trot i should not have to do anything else if your legs get tired when you ride 
from squeezing, you're doing something wrong. It's that timing of that release. Don't habituate your, your horse to something they should be sensitized to. Your legs need to mean go. They need to mean yield. All those things are really important. So watching their feet. And eventually, my goal with my horses is to get them to finish a maneuver. So I started it, you finish it. So, you know, after you get through the teaching phase and your horse is confident in that maneuver, then I can be like, um, you finish it. So an uh, example of this is I taught my horse, Ember, to, to pick up, do a canter part, a walk to canter, and right lead or left lead, depending on which knee I raised. So if I raise my right knee uh, and smooch, I expected her to pick up a right lead. If I pick up my, my left, I want a left lead. And what that does is that actually shifts my body and gets my weight back and out of her way to pick up. And the other part of that is I want to, I don't want to have to do all this setup. I don't want to have to do the bin and push the hip over every time. Eventually, I need to transfer that responsibility to my horse. After I've done it enough times, I can be like, hey, this is your chance to shine. I'm expecting you to do that. And it's amazing how fast they pick it up. If you do that and they pick up the wrong lead and you break them down and you bend them a little bit, pretty soon they're like, oh, when she does, lifts her right knee, I don't get in trouble if I pick up a right lead. And that, it's really cool how you can apply this. You can apply it to anything. Horses are so smart.